Hello, my name is Christopher Crutchfield, and I am an electrical engineering master's student with the University of California, San Diego. I work as a researcher with Engineers for Exploration. Today, I am going to talk about a proposed methodology for understanding group level decision making we call baboons on the move. During this presentation, we'll cover the motivation for the work, what's necessary to understand group decisions, what the current methods are, our proposed methods, uh, the assumptions our algorithm makes, and why we don't use machine learning. Finally, we'll talk about our future work on this project. Collective and distributed decision making has long been a topic of interest. Understanding can help us understand ourselves, as social mammals such as baboons have much in common with humans. Group dynamics can often be similar to human social structures. It can also aid in conservation efforts as better understanding of decision making will help ecologists better predict behavior. Other fields also have interest in group decisions through group cognition, such as swarm robotics. Ideally, in order to understand group decision making, you would have a system where you can do the four steps on, on the screen at once. Each of them focuses on a different level of granularity. It is necessary to monitor individuals within the group as each individual has their own motivations. These motivations lead to the dynamics of small groups or cliques. These clicks can then impact group level behavior. The first bullet point on here can easily be done with notes and drone footage. Two and three can be done with augmented drone footage, which we will present here. Number four can be completed with drone footage combined with other methods. Current field methods exist that help monitor the previous four requirements for group decision making. Current field personnel use handwritten notes. Since troops are large and spend much of their time around large boulders and trees, occlusions from the ground are problematic. Attempts have been made to use radio callers, but cannot provide all the context a drone can. A drone can provide additional context that collars and boots on the ground cannot. In order to get this context, it is necessary to fly high above the ground. This video, for example, is taken at 80 meters above ground level. When we try to look at this the way a typical machine learning model might, with just a single image without movement, baboons are near impossible to find. As this is a 4K video, this makes baboons within this footage about 30 pixels long, or less than 1% of the total width of the video. Unfortunately, lowering the drone further to ensure the baboons are larger re would reduce the context of these group decisions. So given these limitations, how can we help researchers understand this footage? Computers are capable of pre-processing the video to highlight movement within the frame. But how do we do this? It's not as simple as just looking for pixel changes. We need to account for movement of the drone, which we call pseudo movement, and movement of the trees and other pseudo foreground movements. Our algorithm is dependent on using a number of previous frames for reference. In order to use them, we need to put the previous eight frames within the same context as the current frame. And we do this by comparing the previous frames against the current frame, and then computing the most likely location of the camera. This is necessary because even jumping around this relatively stable video, we can see subtle movement. So I'm gonna start this clip over and let it play out so that you guys can see the results of our work. The next step is to build a reference for the background. We do this by intersecting each of the previous frames together, only leaving parts of the frame which are the same. This leaves holes in the intersections where the background has changed. Ideally, these holes are different between the intersections. We can then combine these intersections into a single frame without holes. Comparing the background reference with the current frame gives us this mask, which represents each pixel which has changed. In order to reduce the noise in our motion mask, we must apply some sort of filter. We have tried multiple different filters, but have found the most effective one worked by removing all of the motion pixels that were not part of a cluster. We can compare against the original video to see that this mask tracks the baboons. This mask is used to generate the regions we saw in the presentation. 
So once again, I'm going to let this play out so we can see how well the mask tracks the baboons. In order for this all to work, we do have to make some assumptions, though. We assume that the camera is approximately fixed. If this assumption does not hold, then there is too much pseudo motion, and we are not able to correct for it. To ensure that the pseudo motion is kept to a minimum, the drone is flown in a hover configuration. Our second assumption is that the baboons are moving enough within the frame so that we can track them. If the baboons are not moving, our algorithm is not capable of tracking them. A common question that comes up is, can we just use machine learning instead of this motion method? Typically, machine learning methods look at a single image for detection. With this in mind, we plotted the most important features for the baboons and found that the clusters of baboons versus the clusters of not baboons were not separable because our signal to noise ratio was too large. This led to poor results with the algorithms we tried, including YOLO, BGG16, and efficient methods. In addition to what's been presented here today, we are currently working on the persistence of the baboons when they stop moving to address one of the assumptions. Because it's difficult to know if they are no longer detected because A, they've stopped moving, or B, because they've been occluded, we are building a probabilistic model of where we expect them to be each frame they have been lost. Once observed again, we will be able to use that knowledge to refine our probability model. We will also be improving the usability of our code base to reduce the amount of turnaround time from observation to augmented video. This improved usability will include the ability for researchers to add additional augmentations to the video, including individual animal identity. During this presentation, we briefly mentioned current models. We then introduced a new proposed method for collecting augmented drone footage. Lastly, we briefly introduced the idea of combining current methods with our new augmented drone footage to get the full context of the group decision. Once again, my name is Christopher Kretschmer with the University of California, San Diego and Engineers for Exploration. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at the email listed on the screen. We would like to thank Neil Thomas for providing the drone footage used as a data set throughout this research and presentation.